Drowning in a sea of protein advice? Wondering how it pairs with creatine for muscle gains? We've navigated the storm and in this video, we'll decode the science-backed facts on optimal protein intake and its synergy with creatine. Dive in to get clear answers to all your burning questions. There's a whirlwind of advice about protein intake. 2 grams, 1.5 grams, 0.82 grams, 0.75 grams, 0.4 grams per pound, etc. When you consume up to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight daily, often it needs to be paired with creatine for enhanced muscle growth. Creatine should be 3 to 5 grams per day even on rest days or maybe not? Overwhelmed, I get it. With so many varying opinions on protein and its synergy with creatine, it's easy to be. In this video, we'll break down the science-backed data on all your protein and creatine queries, starting with, how much protein should I eat daily? For general health, the World Health Organization suggests 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight or 3.6 grams per pound. For an 80 kilo person, around 180 pounds, that's roughly 65 grams daily. Consider this, a turkey and rice bowl with milk meets this quota, but this is inadequate for those who lift weights or train hard. There's ample evidence suggesting higher protein levels work well, especially when paired with creatine, for optimizing muscle growth and performance. The amount of protein needed depends on the various fitness goals, whether bulking, cutting, or even recovering from an injury, and applies to all genders, sports, and ages differently. We will try to present a more general rule based on various research. A very popular matter that has been troubling the fitness and science community for a lot of years is, how much protein does our body use from each meal? There's a common belief that the human body can't absorb a lot of protein at once, and earlier studies from the 80s suggest it can only use 25 to 30 grams of protein from one meal. However, newer research indicates our body can absorb much more depending on the lean muscle percentage of the individual, their everyday life routine, their exercise and training regimen, which time of day they take their meals, etc. For example, an NFL player that weighs 110 to 120 kilos and trains hard two to three times a day requires more protein in a day and can absorb much more in a single meal than an average person of 70 kilos that works in an office for 10 hours a day. The NFL player's body is logical to need a larger amount of protein, amino acids, etc., due to its greater lean muscle mass, higher metabolism, and many more. For the best results, many suggest spreading out protein intake over three to five meals a day. This helps in digestion and ensures muscles have a steady supply for growth. But whether you eat twice or six times a day, Reaching your daily protein goal is what counts. But what kind of protein is the top pick? It depends on many factors, but a crucial one is the amount of the amino acid leucine present per dosage. Leucine is very important as it kicks off the mTOR process, which is, in a few words, the cell growth process in the body, which therefore boosts muscle growth as well, among other things. So how much of the various protein sources that we consume do we need to get 3 grams of lysine, which is the ideal amount? The various research charts highlight whey protein as the winner, as it can provide 3 grams of lysine with an amount of just 29 grams. Furthermore, with only 145 calories, chicken can provide the ideal amount of lysine and 40 grams of protein. That's roughly 200 calories in total. Additionally, if we make a comparison with other food sources, we'll notice that we would have to eat over 2,000 calories of whole wheat bread in order to get 3 grams of lysine. So, this much bread is equal to one scoop of whey protein powder. So, in general, animal-based proteins have more lysine than plant ones, especially for each calorie. But this difference is smaller with vegan protein powders like soy, pea, and brown rice, which give 3 grams of lysine for under 200 calories. Of course, there is more to protein quality than just lysine content. While lysine initiates muscle growth, the human body also needs the other eight essential amino acids EAAs in order to actually create new muscles. For EAAs, we look at the DIAAS score, where a higher score means more EAAs in that protein. You'll see that dairy and meat proteins are the best. But remember, these charts look at single proteins. People mix foods and usually get enough lysine and EAAs if they eat enough protein overall. Our personal opinion and belief is that it's not as key as some people would have us think. Also, taking extra lysine, BCAAs, and EAA isn't usually needed if a person gets enough protein each day. 
Vegan athletes, though, might have to eat more protein or consume a high-quality protein supplement like Vegan Whey, which mixes pea and brown rice protein in order to have results similar to whey. Another big question that goes around the fitness community for ages is when is the best post-workout protein intake timing? There's a popular belief that if you don't gulp down a whey protein shake right after your exercise session or within a time frame of 45 minutes after the workout, all that hard work at the gym was for nothing. But let's clear that up. That's not entirely accurate. Let's assume we've had a meal a couple of hours before hitting the gym. That meal had enough protein in it, maybe some chicken or tofu for the vegans. Our body, being the smart system it is, can use the protein from that pre-workout meal to start the repair work. As long as you refuel with another protein source within about four to six hours after you work out, you're giving your muscles what they need. Remember that the main key point is the daily protein intake generally and not so much the timing. Pre-bed protein timing. After finishing your workout, there's another crucial timing aspect for consuming protein that many don't talk about, taking protein right before you sleep. A study conducted on this matter labeled pre-sleep protein consumption as a vital opportunity for protein intake. The findings recommend that around 40 grams of protein should be consumed before a long night's sleep. That approach aids in enhancing overnight muscle protein creation. However, there's a point to know. There were two other detailed studies that examined the effects of consuming slow-digesting casein protein either just before bedtime or in the morning. After observing for 8 to 10 weeks, they found no significant differences between the two. It's essential to point out that the participants in these studies had a high protein intake daily, around 2 grams per kilo or roughly 1 gram for each pound. This emphasizes the point that when your overall daily protein intake is good, the specific times you consume them becomes less crucial. Is a high protein diet safe? Many wonder about the safety of consuming a lot of protein, but there's no actual reason to worry about a high protein diet if you're a healthy person. A massive report from the International Society of Sports Nutrition clearly states that there's no evidence in controlled studies that suggest higher protein intakes could be risky for healthy, active individuals. Moreover, the protein amounts discussed in this video have been studied for many years and have been shown to be safe. There are even instances of people consuming much more than what's suggested here, going up to 4.4 grams per kilo or 2 grams for every pound, and no negative impacts have been reported. The most significant thing to consider, once again, is the daily total protein intake. If you're diving deeper into optimizing, you might also focus on how you split your protein meals during the day, ideally between 3 to 5 meals. This is probably the best approach to achieve the anabolic effect. Now, let's talk about a powerful ally to protein, creatine. Creatine works wonders when combined with protein, especially post-workout. It helps your muscles recover faster and even boost your strength for your next gym session. So if you've done an intense workout and haven't had anything to eat beforehand, it's a good idea to mix some protein with creatine and consume it right away. This combination helps ensure your muscles get the best nutrients to rebuild and recharge. Creatine can also be very helpful for athletes after injury as far as muscle atrophy is concerned. The effects of creatine have been well documented for years and the most important are improved strength, increased lean muscle mass, faster muscle recovery during exercise, increased energy during training. Research has reported that consumption of 5 up to 20 grams, loading and maintenance doses of creatine monohydrate combined with rehabilitation can be very beneficial during the immobilization phase after injury for the maintenance of muscle mass and metabolism levels. All of the previous apply to certain ages between approximately 18 and 40. Above 40 to 45 years old, the rules usually change a little and we plan to discuss the age factor in later videos. Ready to take control of your protein intake and supercharge your muscle gains? If you're tired of sifting through conflicting advice and want science-backed answers, hit that like button to show your appreciation for this comprehensive breakdown. And don't forget to subscribe for more nutrition, fitness, and performance optimization insights. Let's work together towards your goals.